uh, notebook. So, so far, I suppose what we've covered is we can mess around with images and, and, and acquisition datas. We can create uh, acquisition models. Uh, we can do forwards and backwards projections. We can do some reconstructions. And we can also decompose our reconstructions so that we can uh, start implementing our own or, or pre-existing algorithms. That's what we're up to so far, right? And we could also do some, I don't know, create some simulated data, uh, add some noise to that data, loads of things. Making good progress. Everyone happy? Yes. Um, and so the next bit that we're going to get into um, starts with uh, some list mode data. And so hopefully you'll have all run this download script. I think it should be. Uh, it will be executed every time you do that update VM. So if you've done that, you should be fine. We'll find out pretty soon anyway. All right. Uh, in Jupyter Notebooks, you've got this, uh, this magic uh, command. And uh, that enables you to do some, uh, some things that aren't strictly Python. You could also do um, an exclamation mark. And that would uh, let you do things which are from, I suppose, bash. Anyway, ls says, um, uh, tell me what's going in in this particular folder. And as you run it, you'll see that I have these two files, the .l and .l HDR. So I said earlier, when we're using um, interfile, if we have an image, it will be uh, .hv for the header and .v for the, for the raw data. For uh, a sinogram, we'll have a .hs for the header and a .s for the, for the binary data. And then this is list mode data. And uh, list mode data is a collection of all of the events that happened over, over a time period. And so it, it tends to contain the most scans. It will contain far more information than, than your sinogram. So what we could do is we can take our, our list mode data, and then we can convert, we can uh, histogram that, so then we end up with sinograms. And then we can reconstruct those uh, the same as before. So let's give that a go. Um, I've got my list mode file. We've got a norm file. And I think we'll come back to that in a little bit. We've got an attenuation. And then we're going to give it an, we're going to create a sinogram. So we'll need uh, an output sinogram template name. All right. So the first thing we need to do is to create a template. So we've got all of our list mode data, which is uh, just sort of uh, event by event what's happening in our scanner. And we want to histogram that into a sinogram, and we need to tell it what we want that, hit that sinogram to look like. So in this case, we want it to look like the, uh, the Siemens MMR, uh, which will have you know, span 11. It's got a, a certain uh, ring difference, and so on and so forth. And then we're going to use this class, list mode to sinograms does exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, so I'm going to create a LM to Sino, in which I'll feed it in the, uh, the list mode uh, uh, file. And then I'll get the output as, as, uh, as this sinogram. Your list mode data will probably go on for the duration, could potentially go on for the duration of your whole scan. If you were looking to do something like uh, dynamics, you might want to just have, uh, you might want to read then your list mode data into uh, sections. So you could, in theory, do, say, a for loop around this, uh, this bit. And you could say, you know, first I want you to take the 0th to 500th second, then I want you to take the 501st to the 1,000th second, and so on and so forth. And you would end up with, um, you can end up with as many sinograms as you want. So if you're looking to do any dynamic reconstructions, this is, is how you would do that. OK? Also, you saw things like um, uh, gating and, and so on. Very quick question. Um, yep. How long does the scan this list mode file? I had a look, and it's like 90 gigs, 80 something gigabytes. Yeah. How many seconds is that for? Um, so the boss there, <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, well, I don't. I don't think we have a file of 80 gigabytes on that. You can 
take a bit too long to download it. Uh, yeah, the whole scan was one hour. Or if we possibly we didn't put the whole scan on the on the download link. But yeah, probably do, do you know countries to be in or not? Probably for this is <coughs> uh, we got like forty five minutes games. No, 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 for 20 minute scans, we get at least 100 or 4 gig limit there if we get the right to the A gigish, I think, for every 10 or 20 minutes. But most of these are under a gig. Yeah, well, I'll see. But here it says it's gone on for an hour. We could have easily taken a whole hour and then we could have chopped it off after the first, you know, 500 megabytes of, of events. And then this header file, we didn't necessarily update it with it. So it's not necessarily representative of a, of a real scan. I, don't, I actually don't know how big this... Yeah, uh, it's, oh, sorry, no. It's 8.8 .8 gigs. Still quite big. Yeah, so that will be the whole hour. Yeah. Oh, so we've got the whole scan? Top notch. All right, so uh, we've run this. We've said, uh, get me the first 500 seconds of the scan, um, and then we'll probably run LS again, and we'll see that we've created uh, some sinograms, uh, of which uh, what this is saying is uh, it's frame one, gate one, so on and so forth for, for that particular sinogram. So that's why you could potentially do sort of a for loop around it and, and increment it that way. Anyway, that's by the by. And then uh, have a look and see what that looks like. It looks like this. How would I generate the frame one gate two image, for example? Yeah, that's, uh, I realized that as I was saying, we haven't actually implemented that in, in Surf. But it will be in the near future. But so in, it's, the reason that ends up is because it calls stir, and stir will uh, do sort of, it'll loop over it. In surf, the way you would do it is you'd do it manually. You'd just do a for loop around yourself, and then you'd set your time intervals, and then you know you can set your own prefix as and how you want. That makes sense? It's not the nicest way of doing it, but it's just because so far we haven't got around to, to wrapping that function, that for loop around. That's all it is, a for loop. I think it's just a uh, single. Yeah, but anyway, probably what I do, and probably what I do do is I have a for loop in which I'll reset this, and then I'll probably give it a different uh, prefix. Um, all right, we so here you can see the cross hatching, and this is the what Chris was talking about about the, the missing uh, blocks that are in the MMR. And then. Uh, and this comes back to the conversation that we were just having about sort of the, uh, the modeling or the estimation of randoms in SURF, of which we're capable of, of currently estimating the randoms. And I think if you have a read through the little help here. You can see that we're going to be able to um, estimate our randoms based on our list mode data. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Yep. Yeah. So let's get our randoms out by estimating them. And this is a, a maximum like uh, expectation maximization uh, step as well. Takes a little while. Takes a long while. By the way, if you're running this locally, you can uh, sometimes have a look at your your little terminal window, the one that you used uh, to get Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook, and then you can see uh, some extra output. And so you, here you can see the um, it uh, maximizing the the likelihood, and then I think now it's probably finished. So if I went back to my uh, Jupyter notebook, it, it's finished. So if you want an extra bit of output and you happen to be running in somewhere where you have a terminal available to you, you can you can see what's going on. Maybe you can redirect those if 
Uh, yeah. And so then for that particular scan, that's what that particular time interval of that particular scan, that's what my randoms look like. And so, so far we've managed, we can project with um, additive terms. We've reconstructed, but we haven't so far done a reconstruction where we have um, additive terms in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, create an acquisition model. Uh, create a, uh, an objective function. Uh, create a reconstructor where we're going to set our number of subsets and our number of sub iterations. Good. Uh, then create uh, an initial image. And this is going to be based on our um, uh, based on our, our input data, our acquisition data. And then we've done just reconstruct. And so, um, so far, Sorry, I just jumped a little bit ahead of myself. So far, all we're doing is we're just running the, the reconstruction. Later on, we'll go in and we'll add in the, the things like the randoms. So if you give that a run. Everything's starting to take a little bit longer now because we're getting into uh, into using real data, right? And then, as I said, we're slowly going to add in the, the complexity, sort of the, the realness into the problem. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start, just start we're going to start with the uh, detector sensitivity, and this was in Chris's presentation right at the beginning, and it's uh, it comes from sort of uh, the efficiency in each of our crystal pairs, and this is something that they might do measure as part of their uh, QC, and you would hope that in a in a hospital they would be doing uh, these sorts of checks, say, every morning. And so if you were ever wanted to reconstruct your scanner information, you'll go to your, anyone in the hospital, you'll say, could I get that list mode data? Could I get my attenuation files? But you also need to remember to ask them to get the norm files. And it won't necessarily be a norm that's associated with that particular scan, but you'll want, say, the norm that was taken on, on that day, because there's, uh, there's gradual changes of the, of the scanner, the detection, uh, the crystal pairs over time. Okay, so if we had a look um, earlier, we did that. Uh, we did LS to see what was in in our uh, particular folder, and we have this uh, norm. So we want the norm header and the norm uh, file. What's in the norm file? So it's uh, it shows you the the efficiencies of the uh, crystal pairs um, at that particular time that the scan was taken. Yeah. So this is like a flat file and correct right? It's just sensitivity of your detector and Exactly, yeah. With the sequence and the for every crystal, but I also store some geometric effect because you're always doing detector pairs and depending on where you are in your scanner, the geometric effect is different. So you my separate factors and then you need to multiply all that all right and so for that we need to create an acquisition sensitivity model which depends on our norm file and then we're going to add that acquisition sensitivity model into our acquisition model terminology here i find a little bit confusing um, but it all makes sense I've been assured. <laughs> sure. So we've created, we've updated our acquisition model, and then um, we can update our objective function so that it takes into account our new acquisition model, and then we can update our reconstructor so it takes account into our new objective function. 
how would you say before we were just using the log like the of the cost, right? And now like that we added like this extra term, how would that be taken to account? Um it's because uh, well, if you if you read the text that's just a little bit further up, it says that um, you would uh, you would normalize it by dividing by the sort of the, those sensitivities. Um, so all all of them are all of these reconstructions are computing maximum of a Poisson applied to the sum of them with the wrong models. It's always a Poisson applied to it, but if, you, if your system matrix is the wrong one, it doesn't include that generation or it doesn't include efficiency. It's not going to work. Ah, uh, okay, so when you say add set to sensitivity modeling, it says you're changing the A. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So you're adding something to the A, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, the mass is always the same. Yeah. And so, I mean, you could imagine that for any two given pairs, you'd say, I've counted this many uh, events. But in reality, that would that depends on your efficiency. So you would you, you that's why it's extra term in the objective function. It's like you're changing, you're changing yeah. the yeah, yeah. And then reconstruct with it. So uh, all we've done here compared to the first step is so far we've added in those uh, that norm, so our normalization file. And reconstruct it. <laughs> Are yours all taking as, as long as are they, are they getting taking a little bit longer or is it just because my laptop's rubbish? Okay. So, yeah. I don't know if we compare we don't you should hopefully see that the, the new image is a tiny bit sharper. You can flick between the two of them and convince yourself of that. Okay, and then we're going to get into our um, attenuation. So uh, open up a new um, a new image. It's a, it's an attenuation image, and then create a new acquisition sensitivity model. And this new acquisition sensitivity model is going to depend on our um, on that attenuation. So this is the uh, the attenuation. Chris, I've got a bug in my code, but I, is that the same for everybody? No, I, th I thought I might be running an older one. No, apologies. I'll switch online. Chris, can you give me the uh, Azure instances? What, what's, the, what's your website? Uh, email? Uh, you can use self GPU twenty three. Is it hyphen GPU twenty three? So yeah, hyphen seventy two. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Thanks. Anyway, people can try it themselves in the meantime, yeah. So the, on your virtual machine, it is probably going to take slightly too long. Nine nine nine. I go on, So <coughs> one one reason this one is well, it's a bit slower because obviously there's quite a lot of data, but also we, we set it to use only very few sub iterations, but it's first doing calculations for everything. So, you know, uh, if you would say, oh, I'll do it for, for three full iterations, it will take you dramatically much longer. Than, uh, and then yeah. I'll just run everything. Okay, and then you can see that what that we, we only have ever have one acquisition sensitivity model that we're using at any one time. And so the way, if you wanted to combine uh, normalization and attenuation, is you chain the, the two together. So we have two acquisition sensitivity models, one for attenuation, one for sensitivities. 
and we create a third one, which is chaining the first two together. Yeah. And that's um, this line here. <coughs> So in reality, if, if you only had your randoms, you would just have one acquisition sensitivity model. If you had just your norms, you'd have just one. If you happen to have both of them, which I hope you would, then you chain the two of them together. Yeah? Uh, and then we do the same as we do before. We, we update everything. Reconstruct it again. I'll probably be a little bit behind you guys because I'm playing catch up. And hopefully you've all got nice images. And then the very last thing we're going to do, we'll just whiz over this, is what we did earlier, uh, where we add in our background terms. Yeah. So when we did that example, that the, just the stupid example earlier, I just added in a value of 100 and it was blank all over. Earlier at the top of this uh, notebook, we saw uh, the form that the randoms could actually take. And so when we model that correctly, we should end up with a better looking uh, reconstruction. So hopefully, um, if you scroll up and you have a look at all of your different reconstructions as we worked our way through, you should see that um, as we added in each of those, um, those inaccuracies, if you don't take them into account, as we gradually got more and more accurate, hopefully your reconstructions are looking better and better. So have a little flick through and convince yourself of that. Johannes? So, but uh, that means that it's just a water lantern, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. With hot spheres in it, yeah. Okay. Why, what's up? No, no, because no, I thought at the beginning it would be like a. Patient. It would turn into a brain. Patient, yeah. No, 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 but. <laughs> but the explanation looks weird, but it makes sense because it's just water. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, it's, the, it's the Nemo Phantom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bit of an anticlimax, eh? If you take everything into account, it will still be a boring uh, <laughs> bit, bucket of water. <laughs> All right, is everybody happy so 